Many people believe the current events in our world are signs that the end is near. Is it just conspiracy theory or is Bible prophecy really coming to pass? Simisala Kai speaks with Messianic rabbi and author of the book, Unlocking the Mystery of the Shmita, Jonathan Kahn, to help us understand the signs of the times. We all love to hear about the blessings of God, uh, but nobody really talks about really likes to talk about the judgment of God and the consequences of our disobedience. Now take us to that day, September 11, 2001, where you saw the World Trade Center towers mm -hmm. fall yes. and God spoke to you about mm -hmm. judgment. What did mm -hmm. he reveal? Well, I, you know, we're right across the city, so I saw it, you know, I saw, saw the towers, you know, and I was praying and I was led to a part of scripture, uh, Isaiah uh, chapters 9 and 10, which speaks about the first warning shaking that is done to a nation that has known God but turned away from God. This is ancient Israel, but now it's America. And what happens is there's a scripture called Isaiah 9:10, which is the harbinger scripture. And that is that, that nine harbingers appeared in ancient Israel, starting with that first shaking, that first strike on the land. It was a wake-up call. Nine harbingers that were warning them, and the nation disregarded them and was destroyed. Well, the amazing thing or the stunning thing or the eerie thing is those same nine harbingers that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel have now appeared in America. Some have appeared in New York City, some in Washington, D.C., some have involved the president, some have given the exact timing, and all these things have unfolded just like in ancient Israel. And what happened was later on, I'm standing in New York City at Ground Zero, and my attention is drawn to a tree and something says you have to search this. There's a mystery there. And so I start searching and, and it becomes the first puzzle piece of this ancient mystery. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I'm blown away. That's where the harbinger begins. I shared the message. Everybody says this has got to go out to the world. So I started writing it, the book of the harbinger, and it literally wrote itself. I mean, I've never wrote a book in my life. It just wrote itself. So it's gone forth around. But it's the warning that God gives because he's merciful, because he wants salvation. God warns before he judges. Now, there seems to be a pattern in the Bible where nations who obey God and follow his laws, there's blessings. But nations who disobey him and turn away, there's judgment. And you've written this book, The Mystery of the Shemitah. Uh, tell us about what is the Shemitah? The Shemitah. Shemitah, yeah. Shemitah. Yeah, yeah it's good. You're, you're, <laughs> uh, basically, this is a seven-year mystery of the Bible or cycle that every seven days was the Sabbath, but every seven years was the Sabbath year called the Shemitah. Now, Shemitah, there's no selling or, or reaping or anything. Of the, the, everything rests. On the last day of the Shemitah, it's called Elul 29, all financial accounts are wiped clean, are the, you know, all debts canceled, everything's canceled. This was to be a blessing. Well, when Israel turned away from God, the blessings, as you were talking about before, turn into judgments, and the Shemitah comes back at them as a sign of judgment. They're taken into Babylon for 70 years for the 70 Shemitahs they didn't keep. So could this still be in effect? Could God put this seven-year mystery in effect? And at times, could it be a sign of judgment? And I believe the answer is yes. The amazing thing is that, if you, that this Shemitah, this lies behind the rise and fall of the stock market, the rise and fall of economies, the rise and fall of nations, superpowers. It gives the timing of global cataclysms from world wars to 9-11. It actually gives the exact dates. I mean, down, it gives the dates of the greatest crashes in Wall Street history, down to the, to, down to the day, the, the hour, the minute, the second. And that's how precise God is. It's been affecting all of our lives, not just in America, but around the world from the moment we were born. Now, pertaining to that, if I'm in Africa or I'm in the Caribbean and I'm thinking, what does this mean for me? Everything. Well, first of all, the, the principle is true for every nation and every people. You follow God, you're blessed. You, you go against God, you know, there's a curse. And that's, that's a nation and individually. But also, whatever happens to America happens to the world. When 9-11 happened, it has affected the entire world to this day. When, when Wall Street has crashed, the, you have the global recession affected the whole world but it was all linked to a biblical mystery. So yeah, the answer is all these things affect us, you know, because it has touched the world, but also because the principles are for every one of our lives. Now there's so much happening in the world today. I mean, all you have to do is look at the news and you hear of earthquakes and wars and famines and plagues like Ebola mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. these things, the blood moon. Yeah. Do all these things relate? Well, they, well, I do, interesting, you, you know, you said, you said Ebola, you said earthquakes. When the Shemitah began, this last Shemitah, on the opening day of the Shemitah, 
The, the day that Ebola manifested in America was the opening day of the Shemitah. The, that same day, an earthquake on six on the Richter scale struck America. I mean, same day, same day, same week, Wall Street started reeling. So, so yes, they do. And it seems like we're dealing, we're, we're seeing a convergence, so like a perfect storm, because you have all that. Plus, you have, you have the nation of Israel, you have the Middle East, and, you have, and the Bible says that those who bless Israel will be blessed, those who curse will be cursed. Well, America has blessed Israel more than any other nation. It's been the most blessed nation. But now it's recently been turning away from Israel. At the same time, it's been turning away from God. You know, so, yeah, and there's, there's something else in the book, in the mystery of the Shemitah, called the mystery of the seventh Shemitah. And that is a super cycle, which is a jubilee cycle. And when that has happened in the 20th century, every time it's happened, there's been war, major war in the world. It has been linked to, uh, to war in the Middle East as well. And, the, and an end time prophetic restoration happened in 1917, happened in 1967. Really, we're seeing so many things converging, Iran, terrorism, so many things converging at once. So yeah, I think we need to be ready. Now as Christians, it, it can be, it's easy to be fearful and think, you know, what am I supposed to do? So what, do you, what would you say to believers? How should we prepare and is there hope? Yeah, there's always, as long as there's God, there's hope. You know, and the, the ultimate thing is that you know, people say you want to be safe. How do I be safe? I'll give you one Hebrew word that'll help. The, the word in Hebrew for safety is Yeshua. And Yeshua is Jesus. Jesus is the safety. He's the only safety. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can be in the most dangerous place. If you're in Yeshua, you're safe because you're in him. So the safest place, if you're not born again, get in, get in Yeshua, get in Jesus. That's his real name. And then, and if you are in him, the most, the safest place is called the will of God. Make sure you're in the will of God. If, you, if there's anything in your life that's not in his will, get it out of your life now. Don't say tomorrow. The time's late. Now is Today is the day of, of repentance and salvation. Do it now. And if there's anything God's been calling you for your life that you are keep saying, oh, tomorrow I'll do that. I'll... Today is the day to say yes. Take the first step today because the safest place is that. If the dark is getting darker, it's time for the lights of God to get brighter. And, you know, we are all born for such a time as this. So the key is to be in the perfect will of God. And, there has to be, and if you are, you don't have to fear at all.